tonight in the studio. In the big chair. Yes, man. In the big chair, we have Mr. Langston Massengale. Yes. I don't know if I want to call him an artist. A poet. A poet. A he, owner. A co-owner. Entrepreneur. Producer, mix and match. I mean, but let's get into let's get it. To him, you know, right? let's, he can let's talk us. to him because he, he he can tell us. He's here with Thanks, us. Thanks, then. Greetings. What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. Cool. I'm enjoying it. Okay. You know, I'm in a good mood. We having fun here in the studio. Yeah, man. You know, You're in a great uh, place here. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you for coming by, man. Yeah, we yeah Any time. Yeah, another another guest in the chair that mm-hmm. we're going to talk to. So Damn. tell us, come on, let's get to this, man. And I know okay. you got history. Don't act like y'all don't go back Wait. because, you know, Langston, T, 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 everybody that comes in here, man, he he knows them from somewhere, somehow, well, and they got some uh, history. You know? this, is, this is a good thing because, you know, we have two black men here on the radio that know each other from college. Oh, yeah. You know, so. We went to Lemoyne College together. Um, right. That's you know, and, uh, you know, T and I both were there around the same time. Yes. And, uh you know, yeah. knew of each other, just like, you know, it, basically when you go to a school that's predominantly Caucasian, mm. you're going to know every minority student on campus because there's only like five of us. So, yeah. um, and we would look at each other through the window across <laughs> campus like, I think there's some black people on that side of campus. I'm going to go find out where they at. There's actually the first night when you go to an all-white school, if you're black or brown or yellow, yeah. where you go searching for your own kind. Yeah. And it's called um, Langston, orientation. We get, I know. get into music, man. All right. Let's get into music, man. Well, that, that relates to music, too, because if you're into certain types of music, you're going to seek out stuff that you relate to. So how did okay. you seek into your beginnings with music? Yeah. Music, for me, was something I got strong-armed into. To, actually wow uh i grew up in a very musical household with my mother she played music around me all the time um i got music in my blood but as far as going into music as a career versus a, a leisure or a form of expression or outlet um i have an uncle in new jersey who basically saw pads. potential in me Find and decided to and kind of induct me into bacon you can't eat is bacon you don't eat. and the bacon say, you know, listen, now in the five box, I see that you like music, Taco I think you should be involved in music, but you got to earn your way into this, you know, and so he kind of basically like pimped me a little bit and said, for a better lack of the word, you know, like you need to do this, you want to do this, come on, you know. So what's the first thing that you did, that, that you started to learn? He gave me an opportunity to work on a hard rock session, right? Okay. And it was amazing, right? Okay. How old were you, Langston? 16. Okay. Wow. And basically let me taste the candy, right? Nice. And it said, if you want to do this, here's a 300-page tape manual. Read it by the end of the summer and tell me what's in it. That's- and this is like a 24-track, 2-inch machine. And this is like a 16-year-old kid. This is before Facebook, information's everywhere. All you had is that manual. That book, right? That's, that's <laughs> that old school that you hear about, hey, man. Right. That, you know, you became the runner in the studio. Yeah. yeah. Go give me some tea. And, you know, long story short, I mastered that deck. Mm, you know, nice, and, nice. Uh, you know, we don't really use tape like that anymore. There's a few people out there in the world that still love it, uh, like my buddy Jeff Molesky at Mole Tracks, Joel Hamilton down at Studio G in Brooklyn. But it was one of those things where, you know, when you want something so bad, you do anything to earn it. Right. And so it was a foundation that I'm glad and blessed that I have because it's always made me desire to be educated about something and to always learn more about it the more i spend time on it and to always talk to other people and learn from them and and be inquisitive and get new information and new perspective on things yeah um as far as music goes from there it was just like it was basically like downhill like once i knew uh how to work with the equipment and i got to learn how you know like people like chia lee and redman how they made their records and um, he I said Chia Lee, man. Yeah, yeah this he, is Jersey, he, man. Yeah, he, went, he um, went back on him, didn't he? You know, I'm from Syracuse, but like my uncle owns his studio in New Jersey. I don't want to confuse people. I'm from Syracuse. I uh, went to Nottingham High School Love. and all the other East Side Hunger. stuff and everything. Yeah. Um, bacon. But the thing is, is that I began bacon, to chase it and learn more about chew. it and study it's it, bacon. you know, and then eventually one, got me Bell. into... Uh, you know, wanting to make my own music and learning, you know, the black art, so to speak, uh, of record production. Okay. And okay. that's really like my perspective as a musician is that I'm always a record producer. Even when I'm like the lowliest person on the ladder in the room, I'm still thinking like a record producer. Now, did you, so all this is, is self-taught, you know, um, or, or did you I did to- not go to school for engineering 
formally. I went to school for philosophy, for informal logic, and computer science at Lemoyne College. Um, however, I learned one of the best ways possible to do an art is as an apprentice. Right. So I learned from a master practitioner rather than go into a classroom and try to diffuse through 30 other bodies the lesson that was being taught. And basically, I have more field hours because mm. of that. You right. know, you say that yeah. they always talk about the 10,000 hours rule. And I had accomplished that before I was 20 because right. I just spent so much time in recording studios, um, learning equipment. And what college did teach me was uh, music theory. You know, I did study that. I did learn it. Um, but it also taught me electronics and computer programming, which is another part of oh, yeah. another part is the right. is actually a really yeah. big part of music right now, son. So you yeah. you you go down to Jersey, your uncle puts you on, you know, hey yeah. man, do this Langston, and and you did it. So right. you, you come you're coming back and forth to the Q's, I'd imagine, in summertime, hanging with your yeah. your uncle, mm -hmm. and so the Goonies, right? I yeah. mean, how, how how this happened? How did this go down? The Langston? Goonies was uh, just that perfect moment. You know, you have these times in your life where the elements, you know, as God has it, come together and you make magic happen. You have chemistry. And so when I met Peter Capelli, um, it was first as like a person who was a solo act who made this incredible nine minute song. And it was a hip hop record with like five different sections. It was insane. It was great. It was like way ahead of its, its time. It was not typical for what you'd hear from anybody at that time. Right. And he was like, you know, and and this is what made Peter like the perfect fit for me is that he's like, I know, you know, more than I do. I want you to teach me. I know I can do this, but I want to do it the way you do it. So okay. his thing was he did the live Bacon instrumentation Bass. a lot because he's in the blues bands Experience and rock bands the elegance and things like that. Um, and he was an excellent player. And Bacon my thing was, you know, you besides the, the Bacon roots, Club, really didn't hear now in the five buck box for a limited uh, time at Taco Bell. I wanted to blend those two worlds together into now, something. Now, before... We go too far into that. Yeah. Because we got a part two of this interview. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we're talking about the Goonies. Yeah. Let's get into the sing. Matter of fact, introduce the song that you have brought to us today. Okay. I have brought you Black Snake by the Goonies, um, which is a blues Delta hip hop record that basically combines old school church singing with hardcore rhymes, banging beats. You got Kenyatta King on drums. Peter on guitar, me on bass, and me singing. There we go. And it's all right here on Live from the Box. There you go. Debuting. 87.7. He's finishing. <laughs> 